Good morning, Murray Church and friends. Thank you for being with us this morning. We are glad and grateful that you have made time to be with us in worship. Our prayer is that you will encounter God through the music, the prayers, the message to the children, and of course, the word of God proclaimed. Prepare yourself this morning to receive God's presence. Let us worship the Lord our God. Open our ears, O God, that we might hear your word speaking to us in this moment. Open our ears, O God, that we might listen for your voice calling to us through prophets for justice. Open our ears, O God, that we might understand your promises to followers, both old and young, ancient and modern. Open our hearts, O God, that we might enter into the love you offer us. Amen.
Today we celebrate a special birthday. It's Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Dr. King was a really important person for our country. He fought really hard to have rules changed so that all people had equal rights, at least a lot more rights than they had. At the time when Dr. King grew up and lived his life when he was young, People who uh, were black, especially in the places where he was in the South, in Georgia, didn't have the same rights as everyone else. They couldn't do the same things that white people could do. Dr. King realized how unfair it was, as many people did, and as all black people did. But he also decided that he wanted to do something about it, along with many other friends who wanted to make the rules change too. But Dr. King had a very unique way of seeing things because he was a pastor and he loved Jesus and read his Bible a lot and learned a lot from Jesus. And he said, I learned from Jesus that we want to make change in the world. We need to do it with peace. And he heard about another man who wanted to make a lot of changes in the world because in his country, in India, Things were not fair for people from that country. And he wanted to make sure that there were equal rights there. His name was Gandhi. And he said, we need to make the change for everyone, but we need to make it peacefully. And he said, I learned this from Jesus. And I learned it from a Russian man named Tolstoy, who said, the only way to bring about change is to bring about change with love. And you do that because Jesus taught us to do that. Now, even though Tolstoy and Gandhi didn't necessarily grow up knowing Jesus' stories, they learned those stories and they learned how important bringing about change is with peace by getting along with people, but by telling them how important it is that change happen so that everyone's equal. When I went to Haiti with some of the friends from Maro and some of our youth, I had an opportunity to go and visit some women who were making bags and uh, all kinds of things with sewing machines. And I found this really cool bag that they made. They actually use uh, packaging that um, green and other things come in to make these bags. And I fell in love with this one because I loved the colors of the flowers. They found some fabric and they cut some pieces out and decorated the bag. And one of the symbols, of course, is a peace sign. And when I was talking to the woman who made this bag, she said, you know, this is very important, this sign. And I said, yes, it is. It means peace for me. What does it mean for you? And she said, oh, of course it means peace. And here in Haiti, we brought about change a long, long time ago. Um, but it wasn't a peaceful change, and many people were hurt. It was a war. So we have learned from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that if we want to bring about change, if we want to change things to make them fair for everybody, we need to do it peacefully by talking and using our words. And I said, this message of changing things through peace and love has traveled many countries. And Jesus has informed and taught many people in their hearts and in their minds how important it is to love people and to treat them peacefully, to bring about the hope and change we wanna see. So I'm gonna remember peace today for Dr. Martin Luther King and think about when I want something to change, how I can do it peacefully. Amen. Amen. The Northern Region of the Greater New Jersey Conference of the United Methodist Church is hosting a virtual training event Saturday, January 23rd from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The training is designed for committee and team leaders and everyone engaged in various ministries in the church to provide foundational understanding and leadership skills. Check out the workshops and pick two. All are offered in both sessions held on Zoom. Pre-registration is required. Find the info in our eblast or on our website. 
Good morning, Morrow Church, or whatever time it is that you're joining us for worship. We're just glad that you're with us. Here are your announcements, our announcements for today. Um, we are celebrating the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. this weekend. And uh, we're encouraging everyone to put out luminaries on Monday evening. If you need to pick up luminaries, they're available at the church Sunday afternoon. You can grab some so that we can light the light of justice in Maplewood. And of course, we'll all gather together at two o'clock for the community remembrance service uh, an event that we all enjoy and am looking forward to hearing all the participants. Um, our survey for small groups is out on our eblast. We had a number of small groups during Advent. If you had a chance to join in, we'd love your feedback. If you didn't or couldn't, we'd certainly want to know what you're interested in doing and the best times for you so that we can offer groups, classes that you're interested in, that you want to participate in at the times that make sense for you. So please use that vehicle to respond so that we can have a full life of small group ministry here at Morrow. Um, speaking of other small groups, our children's and youth groups are well underway after our Christmas winter break. So JIF, MIF, our children's choirs and our youth choir are all meeting. Please take a look at the website for the information and the big red box on the red website that says links, you'll be able to get to the Zoom links for all of those activities. Please share with friends that may have children or children and youth that you think may be blessed by being a part of this ministry with us. They are open to everybody and we encourage as many people as possible to join in. These have been important groups for our children and youth in our community during this time especially. Now next Sunday we're excited for our online worship. Pastor Janice is going to start a sermon series called The Gospel According to Schitt's Creek and we are excited to hear that and hear the words spoken in that way. We are grateful. Those are our announcements for the day. We gather this morning knowing all that is on our hearts and minds, the worry and the fear, the pandemic that is not ending. Will you join with me in a word of prayer this morning? Oh, holy God of burning bushes, silence, prophets, and Jesus. Holy God of wind that will order the chaos of these days, draw near to us and remind us of your presence. We will pause and listen for your voice Lord, we do ask that you would calm our own anxieties, that you would take away our fear so that we can live our lives as a people of faith in our communities, have something positive to say, and listen for the voice of the new prophets of a new age. Lord, we know that people are still sick and suffering. We know that people are grieving. And we ask that you would continue to surround each and every one. Those of us in our immediate families, in our church communities, in the community we serve, and in your world, comfort us that we might be your great comforters, vessels of your love and grace and mercy. Lord, strengthen us for the living of these days. Strengthen us for the work that is before us. Strengthen Morrow Church to be a light that shines in the amazing community where we live, where we work. Lord, we are humbled by your presence in our lives, grateful to be faithful and know the many promises of the faith, that we are a people who can have new life in Jesus, that we are people who can have abundant life in relationship to the Christ, that we are people who understand that eternal life is both meaningful and purposeful 
and forever, here and hereafter, already and not yet. And so as we do your work in the life of this congregation, be with us, O God, as we dedicate our lives to you. This day and every day as we gather together, we join together in the words that you taught us to pray as we ask that you would protect the capitals of our states, protect our nation's capital, protect your world and all your children, and we will dare pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. The scripture reading this morning is taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time, and visions weren't widely known. One day Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was. The Lord called to Samuel. I'm here, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called Samuel. So Samuel got up. He went to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli replied. Go and lie down. 
Now, Samuel didn't yet know the Lord, and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel. He got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here. You called me? Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he'd been. Then the Lord came and stood there, calling just as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Inspired words for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gracious and most holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be ever acceptable unto you, my Lord and my Savior, my rock and my redeemer, foundation of my life and the cornerstone of the church. Amen and amen. It is not lost on me that while the pastors of greater New Jersey were out on a needed break, all hell seems to have broken loose. There are really no other words for what has transpired. So I've been doing my best to listen for God. I really have. But there is so much noise, so much upset, so much fear, really, that it's hard to hear voices that are inspired. Are you listening for God today? When was the last time you asked God to speak to you? And maybe a better question is when was the last time you asked God to speak because the servant, because you are listening? Week in and week out, pastors and preachers listen and hope and pray, sometimes beg to hear God speak, to get a word from God. The God who is brokenhearted at the recent events that took place in this country, in this experiment in democracy. The God who is terrified of our capacity for hate and violence in this wealthy and privileged nation. A God who cannot fathom the hate, the fear, the greed. Our own commander in chief incited sedition an insurrection. His adolescent bullying on social media led to white nationalists storming the Capitol and creating hysteria. Great danger. Where frightening figures, grown-up white guys donning flags and face paint tore through our temple. Capitol Police were both traumatized and complicit. The images of all of this rendered us shocked and speechless when we need to have something to say. Now we wait and watch our state capitals. Now we wait upon the second impeachment of this man we called president. Perhaps it is the inevitable end to what in this pastor's eyes and heart have been an awful four years of an evil regime. In the life of the church, we are in the midst of a season where God's revealing is at hand, God's voice, God's message, God's justice. That should be good news. Throughout the Hebrew Bible, God attempts to make him or herself known in a voice that spoke creation into being and in the wind that swept over and blew order in chaos, in the burning bush where the great I am was, and on the cliff's edge, in the midst of earthquakes and calamities, in silence. God is also revealed in the prophets who spoke to the evil powers to remind us all of the covenant that we have made and that God made with us to be present, accessible, listening, 
and speaking. Jesus was mistaken for a prophet, and many titles were given to the long-expected one. Titles like Son of God and Son of Man, King of King and Lord of Lords, Messiah. And in his own words, the truth, the gate, the light, the life, the way. Hear the difference? I do. Our season of Epiphany will conclude with a life-changing moment on the mountain where God's voice will be heard again, reminding us who we should be listening to, not necessarily NPR, nor PBS, nor Fox, nor CNN, not snarky folks on Facebook or medical mediums on Instagram, but God's son, listen to him. There will be times in our lives when we have to return to Jesus and the divine in humanity who remind us that blessed are those who make peace and that the last will be first because that's how justice rolls. This morning, God's voice is calling one of the first prophets at 12. Samuel was serving as a temple assistant to Eli, the head of the established priestly family and high priest at Shiloh. Eli is Samuel's boss, his guardian, and his mentor during the chaotic period of the judges. Many of us at 12 are thinking of maybe about confirmation class, but more likely about puberty, wondering what the heck is happening to our bodies, a time when we are perhaps more awkward than ever in our lives. So it would be tough for Samuel to discern a divine voice from a friend outside the window. And his three-time mistaking of God's voice is both symbolic and reminiscent of a young child seeing or hearing monsters. Like Eli, the parent who is too tired to get out of bed. Eli says, go back to bed, Samuel. But with that charming third time, Eli knows that God must be calling him. The Lord is calling Samuel to confront Eli himself about the sins of his sons who were eating the best cuts of meat in the temple that were to be sacrificed. The Ark of the Covenant will be stolen. Eli's sons will be put to death in the battle with the plagued and tumor-ridden Philistines. And Eli will die upon hearing the news. Then Samuel will hear the people's demand for a king one of the greatest sins of the Hebrew people, replacing God with a man, a rich and powerful leader prone to the lurings of evil. This weekend, we celebrate the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., our lifetime's nonviolent resistor, peaceful prophet, and powerful black preacher man who led his march for civil rights, was imprisoned some 30 times and stabbed long before he was shot, executed after preaching that he had already seen the promised land. As we look back upon the fight for civil rights, newscasters are telling us that the Capitol looks as it does in the days of the Civil War, and that's pretty scary. Many of you lived through the 60s when the Vietnam War was the backdrop to the execution of powerful leaders over many years on our own soil. The loss of JFK Jr., Dr. King, Robert Kennedy had to have been unfathomable. And some of us, like me, were born into that very trauma. And so we do need to recall peaceful times, a march on Washington, and recall a man with a dream that still has yet to be realized. We need to hear his words spoken four years later in Dr. King's speech, A Time to Break the Silence, when he spoke out against the war in Vietnam, so spoke out about our responsibility as Christians to see the connections between civil rights 
and our neighbors as one. He says in that speech, I could never again raise my voice against the violence of the oppressed in the ghettos without having first spoken clearly to the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. That is my own government. He also quotes in that speech, the words of the late John F. Kennedy Jr. saying, those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution inevitable. King bridges the work of the church with the work of politics to save the soul of the country. And that, my friends, was over 50 years ago, and it is our task today. Over these days, I feel we did hear a holy whisper, and we needed it. To hear President-elect Joe Biden immediately respond to how differently this mayhem played out from the peaceful march for Black Lives Matter and how differently the people were treated in each setting is powerful, desperately needed, and a gift. To hear an elected leader speak that truth to us marks the beginning of new leadership and a brand new day. If only we can get through these couple of weeks. The same God who is broken hearted, terrified at the capacity of human violence and hate in this rich and most blessed country is the same God who is still waiting, still calling, still speaking to us that we might know that peaceful revolution is possible, that love must win, that the powers must be overcome and hear God speak. A moment of order in this chaos, a moment, a burning shrub in silence, in prophets, in Jesus and in us today and every day. Amen and amen.
peace, my friends. Peace even in these times. Go listening for God's voice to speak. Go out into the world and know that God is the love that we share. Know Christ, who is of all mercy and grace and know the gifts of the Spirit. Go in the name of the one who is creator and redeemer and the one who will sustain us for all time. Amen and amen.